open ocean, as their ships fought against the rough waters, ancient sailors looked up at the night sky and searched for the brightest object in the heavens to guide them in their voyage. The celestial North Star, a constant beacon in the darkness, a guiding light. The Indian shipping industry has had an incredible journey of highs and lows since independence. Through this, one office has stood by the seafarers, the training institutes and the companies. A mentor, a facilitator and most importantly, a true guiding light. In one office, to have such different people coming together it was one of my most challenging and demanding job as well. This is one of our oldest regulatory institutions. That this was the most satisfying assignment. TG Shipping is the most important job in uh, the wheels of maritime industry. It's like a family where a large number of people come together. Join us as we unravel India's maritime history through the stories of the distinguished patriots and visionaries who led an independent India to the oceans and meet the people and the office who have been the guiding North Star of India's shipping industry. Uttar Tara, celebrating 70 years of DG Shipping India. Early humans yearned for the sea. This innate connection to the oceans has brought the world closer. Today, maritime trade dominates on a global scale. India, now a global shipping player with over 12 million in gross tonnage, has hundreds of Indian flag vessels. The story of Indian shipping is intertwined with that of the Office of the Directorate General of Shipping established just after independence. More than any other administrative body in India, it has been the Director General of Shipping which has been a friend to the Indian shipping industry. And what is remarkable is the fact that how it has evolved and developed over the last few decades. Maritime history of India is older than a millennia and rich with extraordinary tales. But to truly understand the complex and layered history of maritime trade in modern India, we have to wind back time to over a century ago and start at the beginning. The 5th of April 1919, a passenger ship sailed out from the old Alexandria dock of Bombay. The SS Loyalty, India's first Swadeshi ship. As Mahatma Gandhi once put it, Indian shipping had to perish, so British shipping might flourish. But now, the tide had turned. With the sailing of the loyalty, the Sindhya Steam Navigation Company, founded by Valchand Hirachand and Narottam Muradji, had just revived the Indian shipping industry. They are rightfully considered the first great visionaries of Indian shipping. The next few years proved difficult as the Britishers waged a rate war on all the Indian shipping companies. Business had come to a standstill. This is where we meet our next visionary, Sir P.S. Shivaswamy Iyer, an elegant statesman and a prominent lawyer during the British Raj. His recommendations in the Central Legislative Assemblies have pioneered the creation of an Indian mercantile marine. The Indian Merchant Shipping Act of 1923 was passed on 2nd April for the first time by the British India government. This was also the time when India's first training ship was commissioned, the Indian Mercantile Marine Training Ship, Dufferin, in 1927. Dufferin not only gave its first class of Indian navigating and engineering officers, but also made India a true modern maritime nation. As always, it's a man behind the machine that matters. And wherever you go, in places like Singapore or Hong Kong, the top people in the Merchant Navy, they were Indians, one, two, they were trained in India. The DG Shipping is the authority for sanctioning the courses. For the first time, we introduced grading system by national accreditation institutes. And with the result, these standards improved. Today, Indian maritime institutions are some of the best in the world.
as India's freedom struggle gained momentum, much of the world was descending into chaos. Claiming that the invasion of Western Europe is into the fortress of Nazi Europe. The great powers fought in the most devastating of all wars, a war which brought human civilization to the brink of collapse. Millions of lives were lost, millions more displaced. The horrors were unspeakable. Tragedy struck in 1944 when a large explosion rocked the old Bombay docks. The SS Fort Steichine, carrying ammunition, cotton and other goods, caught fire and exploded. Over a thousand people died and many ships were destroyed. It was a huge setback to an industry which had just found its footing. Indian tonnage stood at a measly 75,000 GRT. Parts of ships that were tossed inland. The British had suffered huge losses in the war. This, coupled with a massive freedom movement, forced them to retreat. August the 15th, 1947, Independence Day for India. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake. As independent India started on the path to economic liberty and transformation, the post-war reconstruction committee came out with a policy to revitalize Indian shipping in 1947, spearheaded by the then Minister of Commerce, C. H. Baba, a businessman who understood the need for a strong merchant navy. The policies under Baba and his enthusiasm for increasing Indian tonnage led us into a new era of shipping. But as the global economy recovered, India severely lagged behind and the Dutch line started a rate war that threatened to cripple the Indian shipping industry. At this time, merchant shipping was administered by the Ministry of Commerce and assisted by the principal officers of MMDs in Bombay, Aden, Madras, Calcutta and Rangoon. This system was very loose and structure lacked cohesiveness. In these trying times, the government stepped up, issuing a memorandum on the 20th of August 1949 to create a new organization, an office that would go on to be the North Star of the shipping industry and help revive it. The Office of the Directorate General of Shipping was started in 1949 to facilitate maritime administration, training, policy and attend to all matters of merchant marine headed by the Director General and assisted by the Joint Director General. It is complemented on the technical side by the Nautical Advisor and Chief Surveyor and other surveyors. As a DG Shipping, you're the implementing arm, you're the administrative arm, you're the arm that does all the work. Arthur S. La, a seasoned diplomat, had been chosen as the first Director General. A five-year plan was laid down to drastically increase tonnage and create a more robust environment to conduct business. India became a republic in 1950 and shipping was immortalized in the constitution's concurrent list drafted by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. The great patriot Lal Bahadur Shastri's work with the codification of merchant shipping law and encouragement to training institutes solidified the industry's presence. He has left an indelible mark on the industry and maritime education. With the introduction of the Merchant Shipping Act 1958, the Directorate was vested with statutory powers under the Act and was responsible for implementation of the provisions of the same. Over the next few decades, with assistance from the government, Indian ship owners heavily invested to grow the fleet. In 1947, we just had about 25 ships. Our international shipping has grown to the strength of 1200 ships. The Eastern and Western Shipping Corporations were merged together to form the Shipping Corporation of India one of India's first public sector companies. While you are doing such a long journey, you have to have all the stakeholders with you. And one of our major stakeholders has been DG Shipping. In those days, the role of DGS was mainly regulatory. But I have seen over the passage of time, transformation from being a pure regulator of maritime industry to a regulator come facilitator. And if they hold your hand properly, you will always grow in a right direction. From C.P. Srivastava, the first chairman and MD of SCI and secretary general in the IMO, to Sumati Moradji of Sindhya Company, called the first woman of Indian shipping. 
Many more visionaries over the years have contributed to the industry. From Captain J.C. Anand, an iconic figure and first chairman of the Indian Register of Shipping, to Dr. Nagendra Singh, an industry pioneer and former DG of Shipping. The shipping industry will forever be indebted to these great minds. In the decades following its inception, the Directorate has contributed to the industry and transformed the way maritime trade works in India. A regulator should be not like a barrier, but the regulator should be like a channel. So channel draw kar diya, now you swim in it. Through partnerships with international organizations, it has put India on the global map of maritime nations. The DG shipping has been generous and gracious to allow INSA to nominate its people and work along with the DG shipping while we are agitating, debating and discussing rules and regulations at IMO. The DG shipping's office is really the key contact point between the IMO and the Ministry of Shipping. With its unique combination of administrative bureaucracy and technical expertise, it has brought forth a digital revolution and introduced online examinations, digital programs like INDOS, CDC, the world's first biometric seafarer's identification document, grievances redressal systems, and much more. And it is our constant endeavor to make sure that DG Shipping becomes one of the most modern maritime administrations in the world. The Directorate works on three main sectors. The first, securing the safety and welfare of seamen on ships. With the help of its technical surveyors, the office makes sure Indian flag vessels adhere to all international and national regulations. Through stringent checks, it protects the environment by reducing the risk of accidents at sea, oil spills and other hazards. As of November 2015, the Roundtable rolled back the HRA to exactly the same coordinates that we had wanted. Probably the most salient maritime diplomatic triumph in a long, long time. And most importantly, DG Shipping takes a keen interest in the growth of maritime education and training in the country. The future of the industry lies in the hands of these young cadets. Their well-being and education is one of the highest priorities of the office. I said, why is Indian shipping not open to ladies, women? Many director generals pushed for the growth and empowerment of women in the industry. We are no more keen on following what is what are the best practices in the world, but we are keen to set best practices for the world to follow. India's Merchant Marine is not only a trading entity, it is a symbol of India's perseverance and integrity, an ambassador of our genuine quest to make the world a more connected, a more better place. As Sumati Moradji so eloquently put it, it is not purely for business motives that we today concentrate on shipping. We did business in merchandise for centuries, but our most precious cargo has been ideas of universal brotherhood and deep spirituality. DG Shipping Today celebrates 70 years of service to the nation and to the maritime community. As we open our sails to the winds of the future, the office of DG Shipping strives to take the industry to great heights and be its constant North Star, one that they can always count on. The history as a great guidance and as a lighthouse, the DG Shipping will continue to steer the course into future for greater and greater growth. DG Shipping is a fruitful and but I wish the Indian Shipping a very bright future. Once you are a shippy, always a shippy, even though you are just a shippy administrator. Very, very pleasant memories of the wonderful team that I worked with. The entire shipping industry has received full cooperation from DG Shipping. So I wish them all the best in time to come.
give, wish them all the very best and I'm sure that it will be a wonderful organization as it has been in the past. To all the senior officers and staff of this premier organization, the very best and good luck to all of them uh, in their personal and professional lives. I congratulate all the DG shipping and the staff and hope good work with their carrying out will continue. I wish all the best to the, the team DGS. On the 70th Foundation Day, congratulate Sri Amitabh Kumar and the entire office bearers and wish them very successful years ahead. On behalf of the entire board and also of all the member companies of FOSMA, we reach out to congratulate and to wish you all the best in the future years. My congratulations to DGP and all its officers for reaching this of On behalf of the military of India, I would like to congratulate the Director General of Shipping Industry has been fortunate to have been guided by this directorate with some important decisions which have a direct influence on the safety and security of our most precious assets. Wishing Sri Amitabh Kumar, Director General of Shipping, best wishes on 70th anniversary of the directorate. I am sure that in the next few years or in a decade or so, Indian Maritime Administration will be regarded as the most modern organization. And I'll recall one couplet which I often used to mention in terms of excellence, that that before every We wish to thank and express our deep gratitude to every stakeholder and person who has been part of this journey and welcome you to the one that lies ahead.